pattern. You don't need his antennas. Nope, because it'll be wire. Pieces cut out of the butterfly. There's all the pieces. And I'm gonna glue them down. Okay, <clears throat> we got the glass laid out. Excuse me. Hiccups. Got some yellow, some orange, and some black. He's scoring a little piece to break it off. That should be all we need for the yellow, because those little circles are going to be out of the yellow. The little circle's going to be a pain. Mm -hmm. If you want, I said I'd cut them. No, I don't do them, but <laughs> just saying, they're going to be a pain for you. Nah. I grind little pieces all the time. It doesn't bother me. Pause that. Yeah. Drop the little piece on the floor. That's how little they are. They're tiny. Itty bitty. Put the glue on it. We are using uh, Elmer's Craft Bond. And it's the repositionable. Because sometimes glass doesn't break where you want it to. And we have to move the pattern piece. Make the glass easy. See how I did that? And where you got the corner? Oh, your head's you got this, you yeah. got this flat spot right there. All you gotta do is just cut a little bit. Mm -hmm. What you're doing now, I'm marking the pieces out. Well, you can see where they're at after sawing or grinding. Yep, and if the piece, if it happens to come off the, the piece of paper, you have something to go by. To put it back on or to give you a guideline of where you're supposed to cut or yep. grind. There's all the orange and the yellows cut. Awesome. Cutting the black out. That's a piece of the other butterfly that I cut and it broke in the wrong spot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're reusing it for another piece of this butterfly. Oh, there goes the telephone. Yeah, every Sunday. <laughs> Same time. I'm going to come in right through here and try to take that little piece there out. Are you sure? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's okay. Yep. There 
you go. There it is. Oops. Okay. Nice. All right. Really good. Yep. Grinding this little tiny piece to fit. Using a small bit, get in here. Just to get the right curve here. And I've lost my pattern piece, so I have to do it by sight, just by memory. There's a little tiny yellow piece she was talking about right, right there. There. That's when I just ground. And I'm working on getting it fit in there. There's a little tiny, a little tiny piece that needs to come off there yet. I think just about right though. Yeah, looks pretty good. It needs to be inside. That's a difficult the lines. piece. Yes, it is very difficult. That's Not a beginner piece. No. <laughs> Hold on, let's see if I get that thing to fit in there. the pattern it's just like kind of making your own jigsaw puzzle pretty much is what it is uh, it's almost there maybe just a little bit off right there maybe that's just a shadow let me see if I can feel with my fingernail oh no it fits we're good next is piece number six Right here. Another itty bitty tiny piece. <laughs> That's gonna be another pain.
show them what we got. There it well, is. Solder will fill in some most of those gaps, and I yep. have to. Yeah, if there's the foil. any gaps, then yeah, you got a foil too. So foil the takes up gap. Add to it, so you have to leave some gaps in between the glass for the foil. Yep. Taking account for the foil. There's another fun piece. Look at that thing. <laughs> I'll get it. But we'll come back when we get closer. Show you guys a little more. There it is. We're getting it together. Pins and hold it in place. I'm gonna try to get this body in, in place here. And I think I might actually put something in there for. Well, it's got one, two, three. I might put something down here as a little bit of reinforcement there. I don't think it needs reinforced. I think it should be all right. That's just a little piece because it ain't gonna be hanging from there, is it? Well, no, it's not. It's gonna be okay up above, up up to there, so it should be okay. And there's a couple I think seams will, there, yeah, so it should be all right. It's gonna have what? One, two, three, four. Actually, four seams holding it. Mm-hmm. So I think it'll be okay. And the bear, when I'm working on, or we are. Yep. That's for another special couple. I'm making it tremendous amount of noise with the grinder right now. <laughs> it is noisy. It's not that bad though. Hey, you got it all ground out. Oh, those little pieces were a bear. Oh, I'm sure they were. <laughs> them right there. Many big pieces. Yep, they were tough. I think I might have to paint those in the future. <laughs> you warned me. Oh, these aren't so bad. Yeah. It's these here. Now them two over here. Mm-hmm. It'll be pretty in the light, though. Oh, yeah. It's going to be real pretty. I'm going to paint white dots around the edges. Mm -hmm. Yep. That is a very, very tough uh, pattern. Yeah, Tougher than is. I realized. I'm all about the detail. It's pretty, though. Detail takes extra work. Most people just paint it on. I like to try to do it in glass when I can. Okay, so I keep going. Another little piece here. Got to trim it. And then I got that much done now. Still got a few more pieces to go. Those little tiny ones in there. Slow and steady. And pull the tape, the foil tape off of here, and it goes around the piece. See, this one's gotten a little weird. Oh, it's not focusing. Well, come on, focus. There we go. Gotta get it all the way around. I'm burnishing this piece right here. Trying to do it one handed. It's not working so good. <laughs> you just kind of have to smooth the foil down at the edges. Let's make sure there's no creases in there and it's got good contact with the uh, glass. See, I got all that figured out there. Nice and smooth. Even you cut off any kind of little tags or any kind of over over foil, make sure it's even. It gives you smoother solder lines when you go to solder, and uh, it's a lot nicer looking. See, there's a little bit of it there. I trim. I gotta trim that off with the exacto knife. That's what I'm using the exacto knife for. So just trim off this little bit, right? Right there, you see the over. It just come and kind of comes over the edge of that. So I'll trim that off and make it even. Okay, this is how far I've come, and actually I'm working on this piece. 
and um, with these curves, the foil likes to crease and tear. I can show you what I'm talking about when I'm done foiling this piece, but even right here you can see there's kind of a tear. Um, what I'm doing is kind of putting the foil over there so I can cut all those pieces off. So it covers the creases and, and it covers the tears if one should develop in the, in the uh, foil as I go around it. This is just kind of a tip and trick that I've learned um, from other people. So, and it helps a lot, uh, especially if you have an outside piece, you have to do this before you foil the piece like, like I'm doing now. But if you have an inside piece, like this one's kind of an inside piece, except for on the outs on this edge right here. But this part is in the inside seam. I could get away with putting this uh, little these little pieces in after over where the cracks are in the foil. Oh, I just about got this completed. Um, I have one more orange piece to foil. <clears throat> I definitely want to use the smaller foil. And I have to go get that because I don't have the black backed uh, foil in this foil caddy. <clears throat> Not in the smaller size. Um, the normal size I use is 7 30 seconds, which is this. And this is my black backed foil. And this is my, this one here is my copper, oh, copper backed foil. And this is my larger foil for thicker glass. And I also use the small backed or small copper backed right here. Small copper backed foil. Um, they do make it silver backed. Um, what it is is you use different backing depending on what you're planning on doing with the patina on your stained glass. If you're going to use black patina, which I'm going to be using, uh, you'll want to use the black back foil on anything that's very see-through. See how you can see through those pieces uh, to the numbers underneath? Well, you'll be able to see the, the back side of your foil tape. So you want it to match the what your solder lines are going to be at the end when you patina them. Um, there's copper uh, patina and there is black patina. And then some people prefer not to patina at all and just leave the lead solder silver. So you, depending on uh, what you decide to do with your piece, then that would be the backed, what backed foil you use if you have clear pieces. It doesn't matter so, so much on the black because the black is not see-through, so you're not going to ever see the back of the tape. <clears throat> the yellow... Um, I did use the copper on. Um, it is real milky, so I don't think you're going to really see that through the through the uh, glass. All right, so I got my soldering iron. Careful, this is turned on. It's hot. Um, I got this one, and I have two different tips on here. That's a rheostat, and it's set at like 650 degrees, somewhere in there, 60%. <laughs> There's that? a bird just hit the window. <gasps> oh, jeez. Stupid sparrow. <laughs> but I got, see, I've got two different tips here. Um, this one I use for bigger stuff. This one is a more detailed tip, just a little bit smaller to control the solder. Uh, half quarter inch tip, probably about five eighths or three eighths. I'm not sure on three that eighths. one. Three eighths. But the solder, which I use. 50-50 uh, when I'm doing a panel just to fill and tack because it melts faster. 60-40, it's a little stronger for the finishing touches. It melts a little, a little higher temperature. Um, solder usually melts about 360 degrees somewhere in there, but in order to you know flow the solder, and get a good bead. I usually try to keep it around 600 to 650 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. So that's how hot this solder is. This iron tip is over 600 degrees. Just an 80 watt Weller iron. But you have to use the flux. 
that uh, allows it to flow. Otherwise, you're not going to get a good melt without the flux. I use the uh, Glass Star Gel. There is also Paste Flux, which looks like that. And Liquid Flux. Sometimes I use the liquid, sometimes I use the gel. Paste, I only mostly use for the came. The paste seems to work good on the came. It stays in one spot. It doesn't move around on it. But I'm going to use the gel. I've been using the gel here lately, so I'll use the gel. Just pour a little bit in the cup. I'm going to use the brush. And just kind of brush it on where I want to solder. I'm just going to kind of tack solder right now. Okay, I'm just going to put this in there, kind of just paint it on there. What do you use the flux for? Why do you got to have that on there? Got to have the flux on there because otherwise the solder will not bead. It will not, fl or, sorry, will not flow. And it won't stick. It'll just be a big gob. All right. See, we're watching Five in Tennessee while we're working. Yeah. Or listening. Or was. Or, listening. yeah, listening. <laughs> watching, listening. This solder gets incredibly hot. So what I do is I use a pair of pliers to hold it because it gets incredibly hot. Even that close to the end of the roll. Uh, drywall the pin stuff too. I use this ceiling tile. It's cheap. Okay. Now you'll see what happens when you don't have see what happens when you don't have flux on there it just gobs like that it does not flow no matter what you do you can't flow it that's what happens okay. and you have to reapply solder or solder I mean flux yeah, because it does dry out. Okay, so I'll show you what happens now that I got the that on there. Tack it down. And so tack it. It won't move on me. All the pieces will be stuck together. That way you can turn it over. Yep. Do the other side. <clears throat> and then I can come back and finish this side. Front side you always want to look nicer than the back side. right-handed and this bench is set up for left-handed people <laughs> I guess my mom's left-handed so I've kind of learned it backwards okay, I'm not gonna touch that because it's hot made that mistake once won't do it again I got a hold of buck naked today. 
Did you? Yeah. You got it paused. Oh. It's Good. for him. He's yeah. excited. Oh. He said he's going to do a vlog about it. Awesome. That'd be cool. Very cool. He said he ain't been feeling good. I hope he feels better. Oh, yeah. I need to add a little more flux. <laughs> Drop your solder. Yeah. I got this done now. I got the antennae on there and the hooks on here. Right there it is. It needs to be washed and polished yet. Teened. Washed. Hold on, teened. hold it back up there. You know, it's still silver, but it's I good. know. There you go. <laughs> All right, gonna go wash it. Got Dawn dish soap. Just regular old Dawn. Scrubbing it little soft scrubby brush very very carefully very lightly trying to get all the flux off and clean it up if you don't get all the flux off it likes to oxidize um, that's one of the reasons you got to polish this is so it seals up your solder because it'll oxidize and turn kind of whitish colored and it's really hard. It's like a white mold, or um, that's what some people call it, white mold. And that's it. That's how you wash it. Yep. How you wash it after you're done soldering. Yep. Now I got a patina in it. You show that next. Yep. Okay. Got patina. I got it in a squirt bottle to keep it from getting contaminated. As soon as you stick something into a bottle, you're going to contaminate it, and it's going to turn no good. Um, I got a little Q-tip to kind of scrub it into the solder lines. Oh, don't tell me this is about empty. There. Messy. So I scrub it in. Now, since I just soldered this, if I would have let it sit overnight, I would have taken steel wool to the solder to try and kind of open it up again so it would take the patina a little bit better. But since I just finished soldering, it should be just fine to go ahead and do this. You see how it's turning brown, the Q-tip? All this is getting contaminated as soon as it touches the solder. It starts to chemically react with it. Turning it black. Now. And these are pre-tinned, this is pre-tinned wire, so it'll turn black. If you use regular wire, you have to tint it before you use it, so it'll take the patina. Otherwise, it won't take the patina, because <clears throat> it's just steel wire, but this is coated with the tin, or with the solder, I mean. They call it tinned. Okay, so I've got this pen. I'm using this uh, Deco Art glass paint marker, and I've added the spots to the sun catcher, and now it is done. I've got to let it sit and cure at least eight hours overnight, so I'm just going to let it sit here and dry out and set up.